and I'm going to quote from one of your previous interviews, Seb. You said, I now do for animals what I wanted someone to do for me, what I expected someone would do for me during that period of my life. And you were referring to your upbringing and your childhood in Lebanon. Can, can you share a little bit about this? Yeah, I, I remember saying that, I don't remember which podcast it was on. Have you, do you have it written down? I do not have it written down, unfortunately, but you know, uh, Priyanka, who helps me with social media and communications at our uh, nonprofit, she is, is a brilliant researcher. And All right. She pulled this out. So, okay. Yeah, we can talk about that. So, um, yeah, I grew up in Lebanon. Uh, I was born in 1989, uh, which was around the end of the civil war that was 15, for 15 years. Um, so I was born in 89, the war started in 75 and, and ended in 1990. Uh, my mom said the day after I was born, the war stopped and they made all these jokes that <laughs> I'm born and the war, the war stopped. But then two days later, it started again. It uh, turns out it had stopped because someone important had arrived. Um, but growing up, you know, in Lebanon is just, it, it's such a, unfortunately, in the middle of an area that is seen as a battleground, not only for the countries who are there, but also for other countries. I think it's like, you know, when you go to a football field and, and you rent it to play there, countries do that with the Middle East. Like they choose their battlefields in the Middle East because then they don't have to do it in their own countries. Um, and with my upbringing, you know, there, there was uh, one war that was in the south of Lebanon uh, that was not the same as the civil war. Um, I think that was around the end of the 90s or mid 90s. I don't remember that much from it, but I do remember seeing on TV what was happening. Uh, it was around maybe two hours from my place. So obviously at that age, it kind of affects, even though I don't remember being affected by it, but I'm, I'm sure it had affected me somehow because I also remember that when I was very young and my mom used to drop me off at school, I would cry every day because I was afraid that while I'm away, they're going to die, something bad's going to happen to them. So obviously I, I have some kind of trauma from it. Uh, another thing that happened was the war in 2006. Uh, it was a 33-day war. And um, regardless of what anyone thinks of politics or what war is justified and unjustified or who started it, um, when you see civilians being massacred day after day after day and civilians your age and younger and your family, like your, your brother's age, your sister's age, and you see the images on TV and you realize that not a single country cares about what's going on, it's just, it's horrible. It's horrible because then you're like, oh, does anybody really care? Like what how would you have reacted if this was somewhere else you know we can see now with what's happening in ukraine i've been very silent about this on social media but it boils my blood because i'm like wow now everybody really cares about war you know because the victims are european and they're not even being secretive about it politicians are literally saying you know these are not uncivilized refugees these have blonde hair and blue eyes you know like and to hear those words and to hear the reaction of people. And, you know, it's not that I don't want any victim of war to not get support. I'm all for it. But let's not discriminate who we're going to support and who we're going to ignore. And that's what I went through growing up. I realized that nobody really cared about um, Lebanon and what's going on there. The only thing they cared about is political influence, political presence, um, sending money to fund local parties to have their agendas. And it was just really hurtful because that's when you think, well, what about, you know, because at that age, I really looked up to peaceful organizations and the United Nations was one of them. And then you hear the secretary of the head of United Nations saying, I'm, I'm not going to quote, I don't want to get too much into politics, but completely ignoring massacres of civilians. And then you think, wow, and this organization is supposed to keep peace, you know, and, and send their armies like the Unifil and things like that. But then you realize it's nothing. It's it's just talk. So that's what, that's what bothers me a lot growing up. And then I realized, you know, I had a cat that I loved so much and I made myself sound like an animal lover, but it was just talk. It was just talk. I was still killing those animals. I was still eating animals. And my friend 
thank God she did that. She called me out on it. She, she told me, you're a hypocrite. You're not an animal lover. You're a hypocrite. You're a speciesist. Um, you're harming other animals. And, and you're saying you love them while you're killing them. And it was very heavy to hear that, but I needed to hear that. And I'm so thankful that she said it. I'm so thankful that she was honest about it, that she called me a hypocrite because it's fine. It's fine if someone calls you a hypocrite. Instead of getting offended, check if what they say makes sense. Check what made them say that, especially, especially if it's someone who um, you know cares about you. So um, that's that's something that pushed me a lot to, to want to um, fight for other animals. That along my upbringing as an Armenian, because the Armenian genocide to this day is completely uh, ignored and unrecognized. Yeah. It actually is not recognized by the majority of the world because um, it happens to be that Turkey and who like was the, the country that did the genocide just has very important um, influential power in the area and natural resources. So even when I think the United States wanted to recognize the genocide, Turkey said, you do that and forget your army bases here, you know? So then suddenly they don't recognize. So it's the mix of these two things of realizing nobody cares about you that made me want to be outspoken about these causes. And I think that's what made me become an activist as well, because in some way I realized, well, I, you know, and I can't even get close to comparing what these animals go through, you know, compare. I mean, I shouldn't, we shouldn't compare, of course, but if you wanted to compare, you know what these animals go through, it's not even close to what I went through. You know, it's so much worse. And, and I'm not saying that to ignore any kind of other uh, uh, troubles that people are having. I'm saying it so that we realize this scale of what's going on and how we're just ignoring it. And I wasn't comfortable with that. I realized like, okay, if I wanted others to do that for me when I was growing up, then I need to be that for others as well.